Good evening, Exiles. About a week ago, we had our spring inspection for the air conditioner, and the inspector guy uh, found mouse ne mice nest in here. So we need to do something about that. So we originally, Sarah was going to set up some snap traps, but uh, the snap traps you have to check every day, and quite frankly, we're not going to remember to do that. So we discussed poison, and this is just... Uh, Black Cat, Tom Cat, something like that brand poison. I already opened up in the Ziploc bag. Um, the problem with using poison, though, is there's a lot of stray cats. Uh, one of our cats likes to come outside when we're outside. And there's owls and other predatory animals we want to keep in the area to keep down the mouse population. And we're not super worried about the mouse like an owl or a cat eating the poison mouse and getting sick that's very rare it almost never happens but what the idea we came up with to make sure that doesn't happen at all is put the trap poison inside these live traps I'm not a huge fan of live traps normally because again you have to check them every day because there's no food or water in here uh, setting it outside in the heat, it's going to get really hot in here and kill the mice. And it's, that's a cruel way to kill the mouse. And on top of that, now you have a live mouse in here, what are you going to do with the guy? You can't just, you open them up, you got to worry about mouse biting you. Usually they won't bite you, usually they just want to get away from you. But uh, if we go over there in the woods or something like that and release them, they're just going to move back in the air conditioner. Uh, on the way these things work, if you don't know, is there's a little ramp in here that's spring-loaded. It's hard to see. And the mouse crawls in there. there. You put bait inside here. The mouse crawls inside here, pushes the spring-loaded door open, crawls inside, and then he can't open the door to crawl back out because the spring keeps the door closed from the inside. So what we're going to do is take and drop a couple of these uh, poison doodads in here. So now the mouse will crawl in here, smell the poison bait, crawl in here thinking he's getting free lunch, eat the poison, die, and then we have to check this every few days, take care of the dead mice by throwing them in the trash can, and we don't have to worry about any critter getting a hold of the dead mice and eating them. And we don't have to worry about the mouse cruelly dying inside of here. And if you don't want, they make these without the clear window. Uh, you can't see if there's any mice in here or not. Either one, it's up to you. The reason we got the clear window is because uh, that's what they had at Menards. So we're going to take this and put it back here where we think the mice might want to travel. We take the rest of this. We're going to keep this in the shed. We don't want it the poison in the house in case the cats get into it for any reason so that should take care of our mouse problem but uh, the other problem we have is our air conditioner spring inspection didn't happen to almost August because the company that does the inspections uh, don't have, they don't have enough employees and people are like oh I don't want to work for this company or that company or do this thing anymore because like oh the pay's not super great or I don't have job satisfaction or work-life balance it's like okay so what I want to discuss for you real quick is find following your passion work-life balance and good pay those are all really important things but if you can't find a job that gives you those things take another job that will give you skills or extra money let's say you take a job that teaches you some work ethic, gets you a better employee, gets you showing up on time and stuff like that, stuff that you're not good at. Then you lever, once you get good at doing that kind of stuff, flipping burgers, you move on, you become the best burger flipper McDonald's has ever seen. Then you go apply for another job that'll give you more pay. And they go, hey, this guy, he was the best, when you know your new boss calls your old boss to do, in part of the application and stuff, you know, they go, this guy's the best burger flipper I've ever seen. Like, I, I hate to lose this guy. Then, 
That other, the next job might be a, a factory job where it's hot and sweaty and you get dirty all day, but it pays the bills, it pays well. Maybe you can get a lot of overtime at it and really stack up a lot of money. I know that doesn't give you job satisfaction and work-life balance, but now you can use a, build up a nice nest egg, maybe go back to school, find a job that will give you work-life balance and is a more satisfying job and that you use those other two jobs to learn skills in order to get there. Or you can get a job doing AC inspection and repair. Maybe you that's not what you want to do. That's not what you're passionate about. But you can get that job. It pays really good. It's a nice job. And you get to learn the skill of being an AC repair guy. Then you can use the, buy those tools and go out and do it on your own. And then you get to make up your own hours. Yeah, it's a lot of work. But now you're the boss. And, or you can do the same thing with plumbing. Become, work for a plumbing company. Learn how to do plumbing. Now that you know how to do plumbing, go out there, buy it, use your, work all the overtime you can get, maybe pick up a second job, buy yourself a truck with all the plumbing tools, become a professional plumber. Then you can work whatever work-life balance you need. You're in charge. You're the guy. And tell you what, the majority of blue collar everyday guys that might be living next door to you that are a millionaire, that's how they got there. Is they worked a couple jobs they didn't like, they moved their way up, they got skills, they got tools, and then they went out and did it on their own. One real quick story and then I'll let you go. There was a guy in Elkhart, Indiana. During the last recession, he worked in an RV company. He got laid off. He didn't want to take unemployment or any of that stuff yet. He wanted to save that as a backup in case he couldn't get anything. He was trying to come up with something he could do to make money. So he started up going around to all the rich, uppity people that lived nearby, all the owners of the RV companies mostly, and went through and picked up their dog poop, put it in buckets, put it in the back of his van, or back of his little bumper cargo thing, and there's a receiver of his truck. Now there's laws on how to dump that and how to, but he figured all that out and that man never took any unemployment and now he's a multi-millionaire and he runs the world's largest, or at least maybe the country's largest, like backyard waste removal. They uh, come in and clean up that stuff. They do uh, cat boxes that people don't want to do. They do st all kinds of stuff like that and he's making a killing and he doesn't clean up any poop anymore. All he does is manage all the people he has in trucks all over the country from coast to coast, Canada to Mexico, driving around picking up dog poop for him. So I just want to encourage everybody that even if you're stuck in a job you don't like, you you use that skills, use that stuck in a place you don't like in life, leverage what skills you do have and what hard work you can do in order to make a better life. And also, uh, keep in mind the little tricks I taught you about the rat trap, too. That's what this video started out about. So that's enough of my rant. Uh, so I hope you uh, got, or I hope this helps you on your journey in life. Uh, do you, and, ho and I'm glad you are joining me on the journey to use God's, uh, or to grow God's kingdoms, live a better life, and prepare for the future.